Welcome to Advanced Resistance Training. Um, a lot to get through this morning. My brief here today is to try and get you up to speed with program design for personal trainers. This lecture was originally about, probably still about programming for hypertrophy. Um, a lot of people when, when they hear that word hypertrophy think, gee I don't want to be big as a house and have garden hoses for veins and legs like tree trunks. But if you're a personal trainer, you are often are required to write and you are, most of your programs are hypertrophy based programs. People want to change their body shape or look a little bit better. That's a hypertrophy training program. Whether they want to end up competing on stage is a separate matter. They come to see you guys to often change aesthetics. The other thing about this presentation today, it's a sexless lecture. What I mean by that is it's not, it's not male or female oriented. Everything I talk about in this presentation is, is equally applicable to both genders. So don't think for a second that it's a guy's lecture or a girl's lecture. It's a lecture for, for, for people of individual program design. Okay, we've got some pretty detailed things to get through. What I'm going to try and cover mostly is to go firstly through a bit of the implications of, of training design and how to put the program together. We'll talk about muscle physiology. Um, without boring you to tears on muscle physiology, there's an implication that can be drawn from every bit of physiology that you know. So I'll give you some information. What does that mean in terms of your training programs? I'll pick out and tell you what I think the best exercises are and the ones that probably aren't that good. Um, we'll then go through and talk about how to put the programs together and how we waste a lot of time in our gym programs at the moment. So by the end of today's presentation you'll hopefully have an idea about how to put these programs together, how to get rid of the things that aren't working and really focus on the things that do work. So that's my plan for today. Life and death. They're, 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 they're suffering a potential life-threatening situation so there's not just local physiology happening, there's hormonal changes happening. When I talk in a little while about the best exercises, there's a lot to be said for exercise that promote a fear response. If you learn nothing else today, you have to know that these five things are, are prerequisites for a successful training program. Now if these things are in your training program, you're doing okay. First point, you've got to have tension. Your training program must put the muscle under tension. Remember going back about 10 years, there were some of these exercise places that opened up with passive machines. The ones you'd actually sit in and the machine moved you. There's a classic crunch one, you'd sit in it, it had a pivot point in the middle and the machine just bent you in the middle. So you lied on your back and you did crunches, but the machine was crunching, you were just lying on the thing and moving. They'll talk about great changes in muscle shape because of this. It'd be like me going up to you and bending your arm for you and say that's the greatest bicep workout in the world. No tension means no response physiologically. Arms up, from there you take your arms up overhead and you just stretch your thoracic spine. It's not a classic hypertrophy exercise, however it's a simple thoracic mobility exercise because most people need to increase their extension. Just as a tip for you, if you have someone who you're trying to give an overhead squat to but they don't have much thoracic spine extension, let's say they can only get to here, can you see they, they aren't suitable to be doing overhead squats because they just can't physically get their hands there. As I said, I think that's the best way to train. I think we've got to periodise our programs so that they, we have a longer term plan for people rather than just going through the motions. Now if you don't have real serious hypertrophy people, maybe, maybe you're looking as personal trainers more on the average person who wants to come in and get a bit of everything we still need to periodise those people because they get bored otherwise. You know, as I said, the trainer that walks around without a pen and a piece of paper. You've got to have something happening for these people on a long-term basis. The next page of your notes is, I think, a sensational training program for personal trainers. And, but it takes a bit of effort on, on the trainer's part, which is sometimes hard because they're sometimes in a, in a mould of doing things a certain way. This is a nice system. What it involves, the person who comes in and wants a bit of everything. They want some strength, they want some flexibility and they want some cardiovascular endurance as well. That's the mixed method approach. What you do, we have four phases of their training program and the fifth, fifth phase is active rest. Choose good exercises, whether they're good pre-stretch exercises, full range of movement exercises, full body exercises. Don't fiddle around wasting people's time with, with little things that really aren't going to make a difference in the big picture. So try and look for functional real-life movements rather than doing smaller work. 